tell us about the problem that you're you're uh, trying to solve. Yeah, so the, the ECL solution comes to solve a problem, um, which is right now tremendous growth in the market with uh, unavailable power from the grid to be able to deliver that demand. Uh, it's combined with the need to actually have a future generation of sustainable data centers and high performance data centers at the same time to address the AI requirements that are coming uh, in the market right now and will be probably the prevailing data center drivers for the next four to five years. Uh, our solution at TCL comes with a off-grid microgrid operations when we generate energy on site based on hydrogen. So our hydrogen delivery system delivers to us power to the data center. In the process of the, uh, creating the energy with hydrogen, we are producing byproduct of water. As a result, our site is zero emission and zero water. And actually, in some cases, negative water. It's actually giving back water into the community when we operate in. We developed a platform, which is a very unique power distribution platform into the data sector with multiple power sources that can run and operate in parallel. And we eliminated the diesel generators and the UPS systems from the data centers altogether. We developed a platform, which is also creating a high availability and high performance cooling system. The cooling system can enable us today to deliver 75 kW per rack and will be able to deliver to us in Q2 next year 125 kW per rack, including direct electric power. And to wrap everything together, we have a very strong, dedicated data center management system, which gives the customer and us very high level of visibility of what's happening in the data center at any second. Okay, yeah. So the question is, if you could explain kind of the basics of this. It, is this a fuel cell that you're using, or you're actually producing uh, hydrogen? You're splitting, you're using, you're producing hydrogen, so you're taking a different energy input and splitting water. Could, could you explain how this yes, works? We, we take a feed of uh, hydrogen into our site. That feed can be either in liquid state or in gas state. We do not produce right now hydrogen on site. We take that feed of hydrogen, which we strive to be as green as possible, and use fuel cells in a specialty system that we built to generate energy in a reliable way. Uh, we deliver energy to the data center in DC form, not in AC form like everybody else is feeding data centers today. As a result, we can actually deliver a full DC data center or an AC data center. Our power conditioning system will take this as the first source based on the fuel cells, a high capacity battery which is on site, and any other two sources of energy that are capable of coming into the data center. Okay. And so this is intended to be the, uh, the primary source of energy, or yes. is this a backup source of uh, power? Our hydrogen-based solution is the primary uh, power source for the microgrid that we deliver to the data center. And it's been designed in a highly redundant way to create a N plus six configuration on the power generation and deliver primary source energy in general, our site is designed for six nights, which is a tier four data center. So, so the question is about the physical setup. Like you must have tanks of hydrogen then on site that, that yeah. is being stored? Yes, we, we have two options. If it's a small site and we do not have a pipeline access, we have on-site tanks of hydrogen, liquid hydrogen, which are cryo tanks, and they feed our power generation system. If we are next to a pipeline, uh, then we take the hydrogen and gaseous state and deliver it directly into the power generation units. Okay. Um, the next question is the size of the, the implementation. You know, do you envision that starting small and scaling large? Yeah. Our, our ECL solution is a built to be a modular solution. Our base building block is one megawatt, and we repeat that one megawatt as many times as we need. It can go up up to thousands of uh, blocks put together. Uh, we are targeting small sites up to seven to 10 megawatts to be fed by liquid hydrogen with delivery, and larger sites to be on the pipeline to deliver 
uh, larger sites, which we need for the AI factory of the future. Uh, these our growth in the sorry. Our way to scale our solution is only scale out. We are not scaling up, so we maintain the one megawatt block at all times. Even if we go to 150 or 250 or 500 mix site, it's just a repetition of the same block. That give us two levels of one repeatability and reliability because the block is fully vetted and tested, and second, the ability to uh, grow the site based on the customer needs. We do not need to pre-build very large site. We build on demand. The one megawatt blocks. We can turn around any size data center in six months. Okay, and then uh, the last question for me would be about the business case for doing this. Is this more expensive? And if so, how much more expensive? Is it more efficient? If so, how much more so, efficient? So our cost to build is significantly lower than the average in the United States and worldwide for data centers. So we are very competitive from the price to build. From a TCO perspective to the customer and cost of energy, we are also extremely competitive, especially when we're connected to the hydrogen pipeline. That gives us the ability to compete with any grid connectivity. If you look at the total cost of ownership for the customer, we are delivering a highly premium data center at a very competitive price to the standard co-location sites today. We're actually much more dense than traditional data centers. So there are mm. data centers consume 1,200 square feet per megawatt in the yeah. structure itself, mm -hmm. and about to 500 square feet to 3,500 square feet outside. That is in, the, in the, our industry is about six to eight X more dense inside the structure. Yeah. And on the outside, it's just open space. So it's a little bit easier for us to actually uh, leverage the uh, site around us. Uh, I see. The, the difference in size is not significant outside as well because we eliminated completely the diesel generators and mm. those are actually taking a lot of space outside mm. in the show data centers. Mm. Mm. The system is uniquely built and does not take more space than other NA sites. It actually takes less space than other sites because of the compact aspect of uh, cooling only one megawatt. Even though we create very high performance inside, our racks can go today to 50 to 75 kW. We're not consuming more energy than others. We're operating with a PV of 1.1 or better. So the cost per kilowatt hour is heavily depending on the cost of kilogram of hydrogen. It's a very, yeah. very localized pricing, depending yeah. on where you are and if you need delivery or pipeline. If you operate on a pipeline, we can deliver a price of energy between five cents and 12 cents. Okay, if we are operating on of a delivery systems, so we can yeah. deliver between thirty cents and forty five cents. Yeah, so could, could you maybe we... talk a little bit about those pipelines and the availability? It depends on the market, I'm sure, but how common is it to be able to find hydrogen at this volume? Yeah, so the U.S. right now has sixteen hundred miles of uh, pipelines. Uh, they are concentrated in multiple areas in, in the Latin Gulf area and Texas, Louisiana, uh, you know, next to Chicago. This is tremendous uh, distribution of hydrogen. In Ashburn, Virginia, there's actually quite a bit of hydrogen distribution through pipelines. And new pipelines are coming online every day. They usually associated with green hydrogen generation which the factories would generate the green hydrogen know that they actually get delivery. They have to create a pipeline connectivity and uh, it's growing by the, the month and by the year. We hope to have significant increase in the pipeline availability within the next two to three years. Sounds really interesting. Uh, and so, as a company, could you uh, talk a little bit about um, ECL? How long have you guys been around? Who are the founders, any backers, financial backers, uh, things like that? Yeah. So ECL was established in 2021. And you know, it started then only founded by myself and my co-founder, which is Radesh Gopinath, who came from the energy world after many years of working there. For Bloom Energy, Toshiba, and other energy companies. 
And we decided to actually create a new category of data centers, and we are successful in it. Uh, right now, the way we operate, we have an executive team of nine people, which is running the company, an engineering team of about 22 people, which is running all the engineering development of the site. We are now expanding into larger operations and sourcing teams to create the uh, abil- a capability to move forward into large-scale deployments. We've been the investors for us uh, in the initial round were the Molex slash Koch industry, not Coca Cola, Koch industry, and uh, and a VC, traditional VC. Uh, we since raised some more money from uh, mostly individuals, which contribute to a safe uh, raise that we did, and we're raising some more money right now for institutional uh, partners that are working with us. All right, fantastic. And you've all your background. What, what were you doing uh, previously? So a little bit about my background. Uh, before I started TCL, I was a principal architect at Microsoft Azure, developing early stage AI platforms for self healing of data centers. Prior to that, I was the chief architect of the data centers of LinkedIn for four years. And during that time, I developed a platform called the Open 19 and a nonprofit, the Open 19 Foundation, that I was a president for four years. Before LinkedIn, I uh, built the data center hardware networking division of Facebook and started it up and then built a multiple platform of uh, white boxes over there. And before that, I spent a significant amount of time, close to 18 years at Cisco and the last four years in the data center world. But prior to that, doing a work from chip design, system design, building core routers of the internet, a lot of optical gear building switches and big building technologies that uh, are used until today. I started my career in DEC, Digital Equipment Corporation, uh, as a chip designer in the Alpha Group. And uh, that's my history. That's fantastic. Quite a lot of history there. So congratulations on that. Uh, yeah. Amazing career. Thank you. Hydrogen is a, a very common uh, element and it's been produced for the last 50 years it's been produced for different uh, mm-hmm. industries uh, and they are actually mostly dirty industries so when we come to the hydrogen generators and say hey we use your hydrogen for green energy hey, they, delivery they are actually really ecstatic about it because they have an association with the refineries and the yes. heavy metal uh, it's right. right now it's they can get an association with green data centers that's awesome for them yeah. so i think the biggest production is from natural gas natural uh, gas we are working with the loud suppliers so a lot of them are working for natural gas and uh, generation with carbon capture so that's how they create their blue hydrogen which is has very very uh, low carbon footprint on it and they're yep. all inserting green into that. And so green green production is a little bit slower. And we call it in our business uh, turquoise, which is a, we blend green <laughs> and uh, blue together and create turquoise hydrogen until we'll be able to actually shift to 100% green. The reason we decided not to wait for green is that green is going to take probably three to five years to get the volumes that we need. And we do not yeah, want yeah. to stop the deployment of hydrogen because we have the option to always yeah. blend and switch yeah. between types of uh, hydrogen. The hydrogen is clearly colorless and yes. uh, yes. The, the colors are, are uh, just artificial. So we can blend any type of hydrogen we can get delivery yeah. of. We really strive to be 100% green as soon as we can. Just one other uh, question, and that's on other markets. You know, we were, of course, seeing Japan uh, is probably the most aggressive in hydrogen and green hydrogen, blue hydrogen. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, some questions uh, on international. Well, outside of the United States, we are right now active in, in Japan, in Singapore and Europe. And uh, we are working closely with the companies who actually can deliver to us hydrogen in, in different forms to enable this in, uh, data center based on hydrogen technology to penetrate these markets. Uh, the U.S. is a little bit more advanced than the European Union, Union for example, and, and probably in line with the Japan market and Korea market. Korea is also very advanced in the hydrogen distribution. So ECL right now is a company which is going global and going to where the hydrogen is to, to demonstrate and deliver large-scale data centers and make this the de facto 
data center architecture that needs to be moving forward.